Satsan with Maitreya, August 3rd, 2002. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the mission of Maitreya Satsang Room. This is Maitreya from the mission of Maitreya. We will go through the basis of the mission and our teachings and how God has been sending the revelation of eternal divine path in meal peace or in seven revelation from last 6,000 years and now the whole revelation is revealed to humanity and explained how each of the religions of the world are a part of a greater truth and then we see that whole revelation we realize how God truly exists and is in control and has been guiding humanity to this point of history and how human again is being called for a great evolutionary leap to a point of realizing that they are one in God and in a spirit they are from the same source and there is no separation between them and they should start looking at each other as children of God and a part of the universe and realizing each person as a part of themselves not separate beings and no title or no uh, limiting uh, words should be limiting them as I am this race, I am this gender, I am from this place, you are from that place and but we are all from God and we are His a Spirit. And this is an amazing revelation that if anybody has a, even the smallest a Spirit of God in them, they will see the truth and see the vision and realize, yes, that is what God was doing to this point and it makes a lot of sense. And since it makes a lot of sense and it has been prophesied to come and it has been foretold to come, therefore it is from God and is the truth and I am a part of it and I know in my own soul, in deepest part of my being that yes, I want to see this is accomplished. And that's what this mission is all about really. We are calling the elects. We are calling people who have been called for this mission for many lifetimes and they have been meditating and realizing, you know, that God is a spirit and he is in each man and woman and child and look at every woman, man and child as that a spirit and oneness. So, you have come to a great place to receive this amazing revelation. And not only that, but every questions are answered, every possibility that you have been confused about any matter in the subject of religion and religions and the differences, they are unified here. And if you really read our teaching and see it is supported with the uh, prophecies and everything that God has told that will come to man, you will eventually realize that there is no chance that it is not from God. And therefore, if it is from God, this is the last revelation of God to humanity, and therefore the humans are in the uh, verge of becoming great nation, not only human and earth, but the whole universe realizes its oneness and will completely forego the all concept of separation and bring the unity to the whole man and humanity. And if you are one of the legs, of course, you can see the greatest sign and right away you realize, yes, that is beautiful, that makes sense, that has a lot of truth in it, and of course, as I said, uh, much, much more truth has been revealed to humanity and we invite everybody, go 
test the spirit, read the revelation, understand the teaching, see the vision, and then realize that yes, the truth has come to humanity, and this is the only way to unify man and bring the kingdom of heaven on earth. And the unity is here and is with us. Of course, I have uh, explained the basic of our teachings many, many times, and in these days when I give satsang, of course, I usually go over them, and uh, they are each time different, and uh, explain and reveal different uh, aspect of the greatest sign and the eternal divine path. And the greatest sign, of course, is a yantra, is a crystallized graphic of our teachings. And I received the uh, basic teaching of the greatest sign when I was visiting Chicago in the Baha'i Temple. And after that, of course, uh, the revelation of the greatest sign started coming uh, to me from 1977 to 1982. And by 1982, it took around five years to recognize it, realize it, put it together, and bring the uh, whole revelation to manifestation. And in, in 1982, in the spring of that year, we reached out to humanity and uh, published the Do or the Holiest of the Holies and since then I've been giving the satsang about the great sign and this revelation to anybody who wants to listen and there is no discrimination, there is no, no no one who wants to listen we will hesitate to tell them about the greatest sign and the eternal divine path because that is what our mission is. Every man and woman and child should hear this revelation at least once. When we give this, this revelation, it's up to them and God what they're going to do with it. We are done with them because the work of the messenger is to give the message. But the moment they give the message, they're done. It's up to the person who received the message to, to go and receive how truth that message is. And there is no doubt this is the truth because it has been um, backed up with every ounce of uh, revelations and um, prophecies, therefore, um, and also that it makes sense. It, it makes so much sense that, you know, if you are a sensible person, you have no choice and say, yes, it makes sense. So, the basic of our teaching, of course, is the greatest sign, and uh, you can find the greatest sign in our website, the first thing you see in, the, in mytria.org is the uh, graphic that is animated and it is a, it's a blue background which means complete unmanifested world and then you see a dot appears that dot is what Bob used to say I am the dot I am that beginning and that is what the scientists called the Big Bang of course, actually, it wasn't really a big bang. It, it evolved in a much a slower way than suddenly, you know, exploding uh, the way it is believed in. But there was, of course, some movement in the universe and it start to uh, moving and going away from the balanced state of the universe. Therefore, the really the balanced state or a stable state in the universe is that beginning before the creation or Big Bang. So this universe, anything after that, is temporary. It is not permanent. It is not the essence. Therefore, that's why in the manifested world, we see everything deteriorates. They become spoiled. They become destroyed. Nothing is permanent because we are not living in the natural, real estate of creation which was the uh, state before the, that dot of beginning. Therefore, we, we are living in a relative truth, not the absolute truth that uh, is not what we are living in, and many people take it as the real truth and become very attached to it, and then, of course, they uh, become unhappy or, or uh, 
they don't understand why the things change and why their life is not always stable and steady. Of course, the more you become closer to God and, and the more your life is based on the uh, reality of this universe, your life become more steady and stable and you will not go to the up and down of the life that many people go through. Therefore, that beginning that is when the first awakening of the spirit starts and that is the first desire of universe that went out of the balance. Of course, that thought evolves itself to the I Ching and it uh, eventually explodes as the Lotostika into the universe and the chaos starts and in the chaotic state, God or that un unifying force, a spirit realizes, you know, a part of him is not well. You know, something happened to him. Something went out of the balance. That is why God sends his spirit to that chaos and that the spirit goes through the eternal divine path and eventually realizes that in order to return to God, every man, woman, child, and unit consciousness have to go through the eternal divine path. When he projected his spirit to the chaos, the first thing he realized was that he doesn't know himself. He's absolutely in the hand of the chaotic forces around himself and from a lost soul. So he started meditating on his ups and downs and realizing that why this thing happening to him. Therefore, he started awakening his spiritual forces, realizing what is wrong with me that I cannot be happy or I cannot understand what is going on. And that became the first step in the eternal divine path. Know thyself. To know thyself is to know God. Self and God are one. There is no separation. You already are one with God. The only thing keep you from God is your ego. Ego is the separation between man and God. You know, or woman and God or child of God. And therefore, first, try to awaken your spiritual forces. And that is exactly what the mystical paths are. Mystical paths are teach you know thyself. Come up from your uh, unknowingness and come to the knownness and realize who you are, where you came from, where are you going, the question everybody has to themselves. Who am I? You know, what is this life? Why it doesn't give me happiness? If I think with a material thing, I will be happy. But the more material thing we have, the less happy we are. But why? Because we are directing the infinite longing of our soul, which we want to be with infinite, to the finer things. And finer things, of course, never quench the thirst for infinity or limitlessness. And that is why we... We long for, we long for limitlessness, we long for the essence, we want to back, go back home. And of course those who want to go back home, you know, are those they are called for return, to turn around, be baptized. So we can see that he went through that and eventually he knew himself a little bit and starts teaching what he learned to the people around him, to the, to the unit consciousness that would listen to him, and he create a group or a few unit consciousness who came and we came close to him and the rest were still lost in the Maya and they are not knowing themselves and therefore he eventually realized you know in order to create a great progress for unit consciousness just an environment is necessary that they can meditate they can awaken their spiritual forces they are not in Maya therefore he realized the creation of the communities is very important and in the communities is where people progress and help each other to progress in a greater degree. And then, of course, he realized in, in order to create such a communities, people should not be self-centered. And they always say, what's for me? Give my, all the attention to me. Come here and, and put me in the pedestal. I am the one you have to look up to but they realize, no, God is everybody and we are a part of him and uh, we help each other and we become the brothers and sisters 
not their masters and the person who attached them to myself and in the stuff taking them to God. And the moment, of course, a teacher, uh, a person attached people to themselves, they are in the way because the way is to go to God. And if they make people become attached to them, then the people become so interested in the bridge, they never go over the bridge to the other side, which is God. Therefore, not being self-centered or not having ego is the next step in order to create the promise of light. And that's, of course, we call it sacrifice, but really it is much more broader just word sacrifice in a way of you just give up everything and then you sacrifice, you know, for the promise of light. It means really not being self-centered. It means that ability to share, ability to see yourself, ability to uh, be discerning and sitting back and looking at yourself and say, how can I improve myself unless, unless you believe you are already perfect? If you are already, already perfect, of course, nobody can tell you that, you know, how you can improve yourself, then, of course, you are the perfect. If you are already perfect, what are you doing here in the body? Because if you are perfect, you are in heaven, you have to be one with God. And then if you're not one, then there is improvement always there, and you have to accept that. And if in the community somebody points something to you that makes you more perfect, you should say, great, yes, I don't have any ego, I'm here to progress. Therefore, I accept it, I meditate on it, I sit back, and eventually you become more perfect. And that is great. Then you will become more one with everybody else and with God. Therefore, the next step is not being self-centered and ability to share and sacrifice. That is, of course, he realized that if you don't do that, then everyone says, what is in for me in the community? He never can create an environment that everybody can progress. Of course, he became very attached to that community that he created. He realized the most important thing to him is that community and everything out of it, you know, kind of a mentality uh, and us and them, the separation that existed as, you know, we are better than them, we, we progress, we are in a path of returning to God and we are ahead of everybody else, you know, those people are lost souls, we have no interest on them and all that. He realized also that uh, he puts a lot of effort and uh, when if nothing happens, no new people come or no people, people join, the, join the community, he became very upset about it and became depressed. Uh, but whenever he starts seeing progress, he became elated, either of these with depression, and elation is related to ego, and of course we are trying to get rid of ego, aren't we? Because if there is ego, there is separation. And therefore, uh, he realized that the best way is to do the job, do the, the work, and surrender the result to God, and say, okay, God, I, I tried my best, I did, you know, whatever I could, but result is yours. Yeah, I don't want the result, I don't want to be attached to it, I'm completely free from it, I have done my job, and you have the result. If any result is good, it's yours, if it's not good, I have to look at myself, see why it wasn't good, and improve myself again. Later on, he realized, even greater than surrendering the result is submission. Submission means God is doing the work through me. Of course, when God does something, He is perfect. He does a perfect job. If we do something and it's not perfect, therefore we have come in the picture and we have blocked the God to do His perfect job and therefore we have not done a perfect job and the problem is there and therefore there is, there is a problem we have to look at ourselves not blame other people that is the path of progress you know if there are energies or impurities that affect us outside of ourselves those impurities affect us because there are some impurities in ourselves and we have to look at that impurity and say, what is in that impurity that makes me angry, makes me confused, makes me not be able to handle the situation? If there is a purity there and you are connected to God, God can handle that impurity and, and deal with it in such a way that 
that impurity cannot affect you or others. Therefore, in every situation, we have to look at ourselves, you know, to see what is inside me that something outside affects inside. And that is, the, again, the path of progress, the path of becoming perfection. Of course, as your situation changes, you become more evolved with the mission and you become a teacher of the mission, the more, of course, expected from you. The more your position is, the more responsibility you have. If you are a teacher, a person who wants to, you know, preach the teaching of God to humanity, you have to be more open to progress and become perfect. Therefore, he realized that he submit to God. If he forgot to submit to God, he surrenders the result to God, and therefore he's not attached to any result, and that is becoming one with God. If you are submissive to God, and God always do things through you perfectly, you are not attached to the result, and God and you are one. And that is the greatest realization in a spiritual progress, that realizing God is the doer. We are not. We are just a channel for him. As far as we think we are the doer, he's the enjoyer. Sister he said, look at my child. He thinks, you know, he is doing it. And of course, we make, we stumble, we, you know, crumble, we get depressed, we, uh, we jump up, up and down, and we say, God, where are you, you know? Why are you giving me all so much trouble? And we just laugh because he and you are one already. And then, of course, the moment you say, oh no, God, you are the doer, I'm just enjoyer here, then you become enjoy, become observer, you become, sit that back, you see, it happens. Things happen around you without you doing or anything, too much involvement, and God does it for you, and He does a perfect job, and your life becomes a dance of Krishna. Therefore, we can see submission is the greatest realization and achievement in the spiritual progress. Of course, still, you might become attached to the very small part of the universe. Say, okay, I'm just going to help my community. I'm going to just help my family. I'm going to just help my, you know, city. I'm going to just help my state, my nation. Even Earth. You are, again, narrowed to a, a small portion of the universe, and you only can shatter that narrowness and attachment by becoming a universalist. A universalist is a person who realizes that their home is universe, God is their father and mother, and the rest of the universe are their struggling brothers and sisters, and therefore they shatter any connection to any small part of the universe. They become free of any narrowness of the mind. And in that state, of course, they can look at anybody anywhere and they say, yes, the same God in me is in them. How can we create an environment that everybody progress physically, mentally, spiritually, create the communities of light, help them to know themselves, and eventually they become one with God, and we become one with God, and we become one, and we create an environment free of all this ego separation and destruction that we have on earth. And this is the message every human should know, realize by realizing that we really don't need too much, you know, to live and sharing more. Eventually, everybody have physiological and safety needs been taken care of. And of course, science is progressing. We can reach to a space, even have greater standard of living for everybody instead of being afraid we lose our standard of living and therefore we have to uh, just protect ourselves. No. The universe is infinite and there is so much resources out there that everybody can have at least a minimum to consider in God and progress. So God has brought us to the verge of uh, conquering the space and the space is full of resources for everybody to progress. So, so God has shown us everything is coming together in this time and moment the religions are unified, science have reached a point that we can progress and bring greater standard of living for everybody, and really we don't have to scratch each other's face and bring so much destruction 
because we are afraid we might lose something we have. Therefore, he went through this step of the eternal divine path. He awoken the spiritual forces. He realized that a community or group or people have to come together and share and create an environment that everybody practices. He realized not being self-centered and sacrificed is necessary to create such an environment. He then surrendered his result, the result of his action to God, and eventually he let God come through and do the work through him, and he became a universalist. This five step, really realizing it, really understanding it, really going deep in every step, you can see shatters every knowledge of the mind, every disease in human ego. The first step is to know thyself. You know, how many people know themselves? How many people truly look at themselves and say, okay, where is my strength, where is my weaknesses, where is uh, my uh, understanding of myself, of a being? Very few people. So, that is the first step we have to teach the children from the very childhood Look at yourself, meditate, awaken your spiritual forces, progress, become more perfect. The goal of the life is to become divine. The goal of the life is not just to have and be selfish and self-centered. And when the children realize that, of course, they put their priority correctly and they try to become divine. Divine is God. God is divine. That means you have to become God. You have to become perfect. And if a child knows that is the goal of the life, that becomes their priority. That becomes the goal of the life, to become divine. The goal is not to become a doctor. The goal is not to become a lawyer. The goal is not to become anything but divine. Of course, after you become divine, you can become a divine doctor, a divine lawyer, a divine whatever. So that, so we can see the whole earth is, the teachings upside down. Child from the very beginning is not taught that you have to become the one. That's why you are here. That is the goal of your life. So we can see that if we can get such an environment, the very beginning, the children can close their eyes and see, you know, the essence in themselves and realize that they are a part of God. And if they are a part of God, everybody else is a part of God. Therefore, there is no separation between them. And that will create a greater beings that will be coming and they are already here and we can see a lot of children that they are interested in greater thing in life. So I like enough two forces. Then creation of the comments of light. Then not being self centered they, they also understand that about the conscious, subconscious, unconscious mind. You know, they realize the subconscious or ego is the problem. You know, we have problem because our subconscious mind runs our lives. And when you realize what your subconscious mind is between you and God, you eventually overcome your subconscious mind, you are connected to God directly. Sacrifice, they, they learn how to sacrifice. They, some people have a problem with the concept of sacrifice because they are supposed to be number one. The number one doesn't sacrifice. Number one takes, 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 takes. <laughs> and that. How many, how many people can be number one then? Very few people. And that is another problem to start. And they think this life is the reality which is not. So, they also surrender and submit to God and eventually become universalists. If you go through this five step, when you realize your ego and you not attach the result of your action, you're free. You don't get depressed. You, you don't create ego and elation. And then you become universalist, you shatter every knowledge of the mind of, you know, separation between beings that we see on earth right now happening and is going toward a great destruction and uh, uh, confrontation between cultures and people and eventually humanity realized that this is not the way to go. You know, destruction and wars never ever brought any joy to anyone at the end everybody say well sorry really we have started wars we shouldn't have done it at all so human going through this thing and that five step make you become an elect elect is the person who realizes the eternal divine path they don't have big egos they do not uh, always think 
what is related to me, but what is related to the good of the humanity and God, and therefore they uh, direct their life toward that end. And this is the people have been created and being in the process of perfection to this point and this revelation is directed to such beings that see the eternal divine path, the revelation of the unification of our religion, and they will come and they say, yes, that makes sense, let's do it, let's bring the kingdom of heaven on earth, and they become the educators of man and teach this to human little by little, and they eventually also see the uh, vision clearly. Of course, he, in that point, after become elect, reaches pure consciousness, or returns to the Spirit of God, and become one with him. That's what the Bible said, and there was light. And God saw the light is good. God looked at the eternal one path that his spirit went through, and said, this is good. This is a good path. This is beautiful. And he blessed it, and that the Spirit returned to God as the one who went through the eternal divine path for the first time. He became the first begotten son, Christ, Adam, the first teacher of man. He came back to the chaos and brought the eternal divine path to humanity and tried to help them out to go back to God. But of course, they were in a state of a spirit. It was hard for them to communicate in that state in a greater degree, and also every unit consciousness still had a lot of spiritual powers, and they will misuse that and abuse that and will not listen very well. Therefore, God decided to create the creation, and that is when we see in Genesis there are days, and in each day God created a part of the creation in an evolutionary process. So evolution is really created by God, and that is the a process of uh, testing and coming to a point that realizing one way works, one way doesn't work, the way doesn't work, they are destroyed, you know, just like uh, dinosaurs, and many branches of dinosaurs died out. Few of them, of course, went and became birds, and now we see them as the birds flying around. Really, the birds are the remaining of the dinosaurs. They really weren't distinct the way they thought they have. So, in the evolutionary process, human and the unit consciousness progress back to a point, of course, if you read though, it explains what happened before the flood of Nova. Uh, more and more, the uh, human lost their connection with the spiritual world, and they become more and more worldly, until the flood of Nova, God even closed the third eye, and gave human two eyes. And two eyes, see the world outside and desires it and becomes so attached to it and human thinks this is the reality. This is not the reality. This is a relative truth. That is why it is not satisfactory. Anything out there, it is, will not give you the satisfaction. Satisfaction is within you. Now when you meditate, awaken your spiritual forces and you reach a point then you are a spirit and a spiritual and progress and learn your lesson, then God opens the spiritual world to you and you suddenly see, wow, what happened? I thought these two eyes are the truth and they realize they are not the truth. The truth is greater than these two eyes and you see there is a spirit behind this world and God exists. He is in control. He is uh, guiding the humanity and the world and universe and he's the most powerful being, even he's more powerful, the most powerful, you know, nations or uh, bomb or anything. And he is in the process of bringing humanity together and human no choice but come together. And now, do you want to be a part of this process? Do you want to be a part of this coming of this event? Or you want to hold in a little ego and say no? I will be hanging into little ego and, and I won't want to be a part of this wonderful thing coming. So it's a decision that all of us they have to see the vision, we have to see what God is doing, what God has done, and say, yes, I accept God's way in a stuff my own little way and understanding. 
Of course, later on in the last 6,000 years, God sent the eternal divine path as different religions. All the mystical path, Hinduism, Buddhism, you know, Kabbalah, the mystical Christians, Sufi, many, many, many different paths that teaches know thyself is the first step that the first begotten son realized. You have to know thyself. You have to meditate. You have to close your eyes. You have to close these two powerful senses in order you become more familiar with greater senses which is within you, which is the spiritual senses. And therefore, close your eyes. Meditate. We do have some meditation classes in the Palka and also in the website that teaches you how to meditate how to go away from this world to God, and how to know thyself in a greater degree, how to fill yourself with the light of God instead of, of light of man, instead of darkness of man, I should say. And the light shines in the darkness, and most of the people know not. And that is what meditation does. It shows you there is a light, there is a third eye, there is a more greater things to know. So meditate, close your eyes. And that is the uh, essence of teaching of all mystical paths. Let God come through. Let let feel be filled with the spirit, with the light, and stuff. Always pursuing outside thing. And of course, after you do that, that the second step is joining the communes of light, creation of the communes of light, bringing the communes of light together. The goal of the meditation and the spiritual path is not to have the spiritual experiences. God didn't say, you know them by their experience. He said, you know them by their fruit. And where the fruit comes? In the communities of light, that's where the fruit comes. God didn't say, you know them by their psychic power. He didn't say, you know them by the channeling they do. None of them, what did God say? What the scripture says, you know them by their fruit. Therefore, if you want to be in the sight of God, Listen to the word of God. Don't listen to the word of man. You know, become more familiar with God's word, with the God's revelation, with the God's scriptures. And what does he want you to become? Go toward that word. Go toward that spiritual thing if you want to become a spiritual person. If you don't, of course, you have a choice. And that's the wonderful about God is God gives you a choice. Do you want to go toward God or do you want to go toward world? So, the second step is to create the comings of light. And that's the Old Testament, Old, Old, Old Testament. God is trying to find a people that accept Him as God and His laws as His laws and they progress, you know, in being with God. The uh, essence of the Old Testament is the creation of the comings of light. Of course, Christ comes, what does He do? He sacrificed himself for his ideal. He goes all the way to cross. He and the Father are one. He has no ego. He has no subconscious anymore. God comes through perfectly through him and he has the sharpest teaching with the double sword from his mouth coming out, cutting through ego, absolutely. If your eyes offended you, you know, plug it out, throw it away. You know, if your hands offended you, if any sense offends you, meditate on it. Why is offending you? Why, why is it pulling you toward it themselves? Great teaching, great realization, great gospel to humanity. Become perfect as a father in heaven. That is the goal. It means you can be perfect. Some people say, no, you cannot be perfect. It's impossible. Yeah, Christ says right there, you can be perfect. Be perfect as the father. It means you can do it. It is not something you can say, no, 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 we cannot be perfect. We can just accept Jesus died for us and that's it. We, we, we can be on, as unperfect as, uh, as we, we want and then we're going to go to heaven. No. You're Jesus or Isa or Christ. You have to become perfect like the Father. So that is what he wants you to become. And the way of perfection is the eternal divine path. Now we know how to become perfect. Awaken our virtual forces, creation of the kingdom of life, helping self center get rid of our subconscious. Of course, the next step is surrendering the result to God and be submissive to, to His will and God. And that is the message of Islam. Islam comes from the word Taslim. Actually means 
to Shunya and submit to God. And that's one step. It's not the religion, it's not other people out other side of the world that they're all terrorists. It's the message of God to humanity. You have to overcome all these concepts and propaganda or the things that have made us being separate from each other. We have to realize it is the word of God who came, you know, to Prophet Muhammad, which has prophesied and God chose Ishmael also that he will, you know, produce to a prophet, which is it's explained in Dover clearly. So we can see that, okay, that is another message of God. Of course, all of this you have become universal. You have to shatter every narrowness of the mind, any separation from yourself from the rest of the universe. And that is the message Baha'i and Bab. Therefore we can see the mystical path, Old Testament, Jew, Judaism, or Hebrews, New Testament, Christianity, Islam, and Baha'i faith, all are unified in this message and in this teaching and its revelation and tells humanity, God is telling humanity, and that's what I was doing. I was sending each piece of the eternal divine path to humanity as a religion, now it's been put together, now you are one. This is the message that now humanity has to listen, to be taught, learn, and come to grief of it, and eventually realize, huh, there is no such a thing as you just meditate and drop into the ocean and become one, and that's it. There is no such a thing, we are the chosen people. There is no such a thing, we are the only way, or we have the last word. But there is such a thing as the eternal divine path that makes you become perfect, become an elect, reach pure consciousness. Therefore we can see that God is perfect, His ways are perfect, this mission is perfect, this revelation is perfect, and you have to work on yourself. Before complaining about anybody else, first perfect yourself, then you have gained the right to complain about someone else. If you have not reached the point of perfection, you haven't gained the right to say another person is not perfect. So therefore, the first place we have to look for any imperfection is within ourselves and working toward that perfection, realizing this vision, giving it to every man and woman and child and anybody who listens and gather the elects together and let's create the fascinating body and eventually bring the kingdom of heaven on earth. And this is the way to do it. And this is not something that we can say just somebody made it up. We can't make it up. It's, it's so vast, it's so wonderful, it's so powerful, there's so much truth in it. No man can make it up.